I am on my road to a hundred episodes. This is episode ninety-eight, and I have somebody who's an actor, comedian, host, producer, auctioneer. He probably sells oranges on the corner to you sometimes in his spare time. He's like me. We work. Marcus Ray Lawrence is next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives, breaking into. That's right, kids. How are you guys doing? It's Breaking Into, episode 98. And I'm your host, James Live Jr. I'm so glad to be here with you guys today. It's actually a nice day after the whole Thanksgiving weekend. I'm out of the food coma. I ate so much food, I was sweating. It hurt, but it was good. My guest, I subtitled this episode, Breaking Into the Multi-Hyphenate. This guy puts me to shame. Okay, so, because he's, he's busy. You may know him from some shows like Lee, Chuck, a movie's like he's a new one out called Circus Candy looks scary, gory, and funny at the same time. He just did a stand up comedy tour in Canada. He's also an auctioneer, which I want to hear him do something for him, if you will. A host, a producer, just all around good guy. He's not there, he's just making he's making it out for himself. Mark Christopher Lawrence. See? There you go. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good. You can follow us on iTunes, YouTube. SoundCloud, Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. You can follow our Facebook page, Breaking Into. You can follow me at James Law Jr., where all James Law Juniors are. It's only, it's only, I think it's only me, I think. So, Mark. Yes, sir. You are a definition of a person who works. And I, I just, I, when I was doing my research on you, I'm like, this guy is out there. He is working. And it just makes me so happy for you. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's still um, a challenge. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like... Uh, you jumping through the hoops all the time and and trying to make stuff stick and <laughs> yes you know it's tough yeah but I mean you are I mean you are I mean you've worked with so many different people and we're gonna, we're gonna break down some of the things you've done but I was looking at your career and as I was doing more inf- more background on you I just want to say that I'm really impressed with the body of work you've done you can do comedy drama you've been in part of important storylines you're doing a horror film I mean like you just you're out there and it's, it's very impressive. Thank you. It's very impressive, and, I, and you're showing and you're showing us in ways. You're, you're not just playing the stereotypical black parts either. You're playing characters. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, you know, early in my career was you know when I was in my twenties. You know, the, the whole sort of uh, black gangbanger movie. Yes, that, that's where we were uh, in the industry. Yep. And um, you know, I'd often go into an audition and and have a great audition. And wouldn't get the job because, uh, in, in fact, there was a casting director years ago, Gail Levin, uh, had me stay at, after I read. And they read these other guys that were reading for the same role. And the producers come out and they talk to me. And they said, hey, we just want you to know that you know, it wasn't your audition. We're not going to give you this role. Um, but we're looking for a guy that has like a face that, you know, that says, you know, danger. And we just want to hug you. <laughs> I was like, well, hug me and give me the job. Exactly. Like, yeah. Hug you for some they money. Got, they have a thing called makeup. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, That's very interesting. Yeah. So but so, and, and as a result of it, I mean, I've only played one drug dealer. Wow. You know, one pimp. You know, no yeah. gangbangers. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's been good. But see, you know, we're here on Black Hollywood Live, so we talk, we talk black on the show. That, to me, is very interesting because... That isn't the norm, though, for many black act, black male actors, and some female actresses, yeah. same thing. You come in, you do a string of prostitutes, you do a string of gangbangers, right. and then you finally get, you know, best friend number two, and then you finally, you know, mm-hmm. but you didn't, you only did one of each, that's, that's, a, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it, it helped me in a way. I think in, in, in one way, uh, my career may be in a very different place had, mm. had I booked some of those early roles just because they were really big projects, like yeah. Colors and stuff like that. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah. But, you know, I think uh, you know, I'm a faith-based kind of person, yes, and so, yes. so God puts you where he wants you to be. Mm-hmm. And you weren't meant to be in Colors in those time movies. Apparently not. <laughs> but, no, but yes, but then we, okay, so I want to start with the start of the stand-up comedy. And it's funny because you just did a, 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 a tour of, of churches in Canada. Yeah. Talk about that for a little, a little bit. You're... Well, what's fun is a, a friend of mine wanted, to, I guess, wanted to work with this guy up in Canada, and he couldn't do it because it was Thanksgiving week, and he oh, has okay. three little kids, and, oh, okay. and, and you know, he, he was like, well, you know, uh, also he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a youth pastor. Okay. So okay. he had to be home. So yeah, he, yeah. he sort of connected me with Timmy Boyle and said, hey, um, this might be something you would want to do. I was like, yeah, because my, my sister's out of town, so we're probably gonna gonna do Thanksgiving on a different day anyway. Okay. 
So I go up and... Um, Ever been to Canada before? Uh, BC. I had never been to Ontario. I'd never been to the East Coast. Okay. Um, uh, so I go up and, I, and I, our first night was actually a Rotary Club. Oh, okay. And um, and they were so happy that I was there. There were all these Chuck fans there. See, Chuck. We'll talk about that later. And Chuck, yeah, Chuck and, fans. And it ended up being a very fun time. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Doing doing comedy, you do it in, in churches too, or church halls, or... Yeah. How, what what kind of, what is your comedy? What is what is your comedy? Uh, well, it's it's mostly stuff about me. I'm I'm more of a storyteller, so okay. I tell stories about about the mishaps of Mark Christopher Lawrence. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very observational kind of just kind of here's some relatable stories to you. And people laugh. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I just kind of talk about um, you know things that that I'm into, you know, like 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 traveling and and you know doing comedy in different states and you know how it affects me and how life affects me and things like that did you do any uh canadian based stuff just because you were up there or no nah. you no know, okay i'm sorry what is it like to bomb i've always um, asked people this i've never bombed very good um there, there was i will tell you a story though yeah um years ago there used to be a club called birdland west in long beach and um, they had this competition, so you know everybody who was everybody was, was <laughs> there doing doing the competition, and and um, in the semifinal round, I was third on a show of ten. Oh wow, that's good. And so they said to the audience, you know, if you come to the final round and uh, come to happy hour, we'll let you in the show for free. <laughs> okay. Wow. Happy hour started at four thirty. The show started at ten at night. Oh, dang. So by the time the show started, people were just lit, and uh, yes. I was eighth on a show of, of ten. On the, oh, the okay. finals were ten people, and yeah. I think I think D. L. Hewley was was, oh, wow. was hosting the show. I think oh, wow. it's been such a long time yeah, ago. Long time. Yeah, and um, but I think Ricky Harris was wow. like second in the show. How funny! Wow. And Ricky goes up, and about two minutes in, goes to his best bit, and nothing. The audience is just lethargic, oh, and I was like. God. Wow, oh, 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 I'm in oh, trouble. Oh my god! So I get up eighth, and I go on, and I start doing jokes, and nothing. And there's this one lady who's laughing at me. Oh, it's yeah. like I tell a joke, <laughs> nothing, would ha no laughs or nothing. She would crack up at me, and uh, that's a laugh. So in mm -hmm. seven minutes, I yes. probably did about twenty minutes worth of material. Because I just kept the jokes coming. I was like, I am not going to fail. And so I don't count that one as a bomb. Okay, that's that is pretty, that's pretty like She's laughing at something, so I'm like, right. I mean, that's, right. like that's crazy. So, you know, because I, I admire stand-up comedians so much because I, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's the scariest thing. I mean, I've been an actor. I've been a singer. I've done, I mean, I just, for some reason, stand-up comedy, that's a scary. See, and I don't piece. see it that way. I think, like, like being a singer, I, I feel more vulnerable as a singer than I do as a comic. Because with, with jokes, you know, you tell a bad joke, boom, you're right into another one. You got two, three, four, five minutes of bad song. That's true. Okay, 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 okay. I'm learning something. Okay, yes. You could win the audience back with a really good joke. Exactly. You still have time. You still have time to you come got back. Plenty of time to get them. Yeah. You're right. It's a bad song. You got a bad song. People say, "Oh, bless his heart." <laughs> bless bless his heart. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be back in about three point <laughs> thirty five minutes. Uh, yeah. That make, okay. That makes sense. See, I learned on the show. I do learn. That's that's interesting. I guess you always have a chance if you have a four minute set, nine minute set, twenty minute. You always have a chance to actually come back. Yeah. So there's there's always something. an opportunity to find something to get them. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Wow. So that's something that I never thought of that way before. I, but still, I still admire you guys because I think it's like you have um, a show coming up at December fifth in San Diego, North Coast Rep, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a show that I produce. Uh, we've been doing it since uh, Obama's first inauguration. Uh, <laughs> yes. in, in fact, I didn't, I didn't even realize that that show uh, was falling on his inauguration when we booked the show. Oh my god! Wow. And um, uh, so the morning that was ten years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the morning of. Um, I get a call saying, hey, you know, the inauguration is today, um, ticket sales are light, oh, and so I go on the radio with, uh, uh, it was a show DSC in San Diego, uh, Dick Shelley and Chainsaw, and <laughs> so uh, I go on, and, and oh, Dave Shelley and Chainsaw, and I go on and I do the uh, radio, and, and we started talking politics about, you know, Obama being the first black president and yes. all that, and he goes, hey, you know what, can you stick around? And I stuck around for the whole hour. We sold out while I was on the air, and we've been selling out ever since. I think we've only had about four shows that didn't sell every seat. Wow. Yeah. This is 194 seats. That's, that's some seats. 194 seats. That's, that's a nice little theater. Oh, yeah. 
of South Wow. And so I said, you have a bunch of comedians coming. Uh, you're, yeah. Are you hosting? You're hosting it? I host it. I bring in comedians. I always have a singer, singer-songwriter okay. open the show. And then uh, I'll bring in three other comics, like a local opener. And then I'll bring in uh, a headliner and a feature act. Yeah. Um, so when you do hosting of shows, you get to do a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Like you were saying in the beginning. Yeah. And then do you like do little bits in between? Uh, I, I generally don't do bits in between. I, I like to move the show. I like the show to stay right around 90 minutes. Okay. Because the audience threshold is, is about yeah. that. That's why you yeah. see comedies in the movies that are you know under 90 minutes. You know, because because mm-hmm. audience start drifting after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that makes sense. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Good for you. I just, I have a lot of friends who are comedians, and they're just and I just I just I watch them and I go to their shows and support comedy, support stand up comedians. It's a fun night out, and many and many of these are not that expensive. No, they're no. not. I, I think I think the show that we produce there it's twenty three dollars. Uh, there's a happy hour that starts at six thirty from six thirty till showtime, okay. and uh, the happy hour is free appetizers and three dollar beers. Hello. That's a nice night out. Cheaply, cheaply. <laughs> right. I'm like, take a date. Take your cousin. Take some. I'm like, these things are, you know, great. So, so if you're in San Diego or going down there, December 5th, North Coast Rep, it's going to be down there. Um, what we, we were talking about briefly that you're faith-based. Mm-hmm. What role does God play in your in your career these days? Well, I think I think it play. You know, God plays everything in my career. I think I, there's been times in my career where I've been in a lull, and and you know, once you don't work for a few months, you, you'll have, you get that, that self-doubt. And um, there's been a couple of times where I've tried to do other things, and God immediately slammed the door okay. He's like, okay. and opened another one. Yeah. For example, uh, when I was right out of college, I um, I was in a lull, and I said, okay, I got I to gotta do something. This is, this is not going to work out. Maybe I made a mistake being an actor. I should have went on to law school. And so I decided, well, I, I'm just looking through the paper, <laughs> yes. you know, and I see an ad for... Um, Learn how to deal cards. And we have placement in Las Vegas and Reno and Tahoe and da-da-da. I was like, well, maybe that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go learn how to deal cards. You can, you can audit the first class. So I go and I audit this class, and it's, it, I think it's like $399. Oh, wow. And I was broke, right? So, <laughs> so if, for me to give them my $399, you know, this had to work out yeah. for me. So I didn't give them the money. I, I go in, I audit the first class, and about halfway through the class, you know, uh, some government agency comes in and shuts the place down. Oh. They were laundering money. Oh, dang. Okay. Shuts it down. And then a few days later, I, I get a call from the war, wardrobe designer from Terminator 2 and asking me for my sizes. And I didn't even know, you know, because I'd auditioned for like like two months prior. Well, like, a lot of times you audition and you may not hear from you for a while. Like, yeah. just you do it and you go to business. So yeah. Wardrobe called me before my agent even had the information that I got the wow. job. And so then I was like, oh, okay. So the door slammed and and here's yeah. the job. And, and, and at that point, the, the most lucrative job I'd ever had. Oh, t- well, Terminator 2, hello. Yeah, I was supposed to work two days, end up working six weeks, going back for a couple of oh weeks of, of pickups. You know, in a week of looping, and so you know, it, it was just a great job. God, you know, you know, when you let go, let God, which is sometimes hard to do sometimes, Ooh. especially in, in this business, it is sometimes. It you're is. like, but I need that next. Or this, and what you do, it, amazing things do happen. Well, you find yourself, you know, hustling, trying to make things happen, and and uh, you know, I've been reading a lot, like in Hebrews, and 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 basically, God is saying, let me, you know, get you out of the way, and let me do what I'm trying to do. You know, let me position you uh, in that space where I need you, where you can serve the kingdom. And once we get self out of the way, then, uh, you know, life is totally different. Now, self is what we kind of, all of us in this business kind of... <laughs> it's all about self. Like, uh, me, 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 me. <laughs> I mean, like, is, is that funny? It's, it's a funny contradiction of terms, so it to speak. Is. Because in this industry, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind right. of what actors, singers, musicians, I mean... But that's what, faith, that's what faith is about, right? Yeah. It's about, it's yeah. about uh, <laughs> trust. You know, we believe, so now we have to trust that God is going to be true to his word. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. You got to get me out of the way. Get me out of the way. <laughs> um, Gerald Webb is in, the, is in the chat room. We'll say hello to our friend, Gerald Webb. What's up, Gerald Webb? Um, he's, you, know, you guys know him. He was on my show. Uh, I forgot which episode he was Wait, on. He fit his big head in here? <laughs> yes, yes, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. We love Gerald Webb. He cast me in one of his movies. Um <laughs> He's great. So I just want to say, give a shout to him because he was in here. Give a shout out to him. We both know him. Yeah, he was in here. We had a good, we had a great conversation. We had a really, we had a. He's really, a good dude. He has, he has, he has, he has a really, good, really good guy. Uh, we'll talk about him a little later. Um, auctioneering. 
I think it's so fascinating. I I know two people who are auctioneers, mm. and it's fascinating. The way they, like you know, the cup, do do a little thing for me with the cup. Well, but I I, I don't do like the patter. Oh, you know, so I, you, yeah, I'm I'm not like the patter kind of guy. I'm I'm more of the, the funny guy. It's like so you make jokes and stuff as you're I'll, doing. I'll make jokes depending on how the bidding is going. Well, give me an example of kind of like, that like for example, uh, we're gonna start the bid at, at twenty dollars on this, and then you, you raise Jane. So I got yes. twenty right here, and, and what do you? Uh, can I hear twenty five? Twenty five. It's back to you. You 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 gonna do thirty? Thirty. Uh, so are you gonna let him just steal it for five dollars? You go. <laughs> put on your big girl panties and <laughs> buy this cup. I said, go 40. That'll knock him out of the box. <laughs> no, at 50. So I, I, so I, he, I, so I see you do it. Okay, you kind of make fun of it, make a whole thing. Oh, that's yeah. kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. To get the money up. Yeah, yeah. And, and now there's a couple of guys in San Diego that, that that's, what they, that's their full-time thing, but they're also with comics. Oh, okay. And one of them uh, uh, had a show called uh, Storage Hunters. Oh, okay. And then it became huge in, in England. And so, um, so I kind of watched those guys and what they do. Because yeah. the, the first time I auctioneered it was because the auctioneer didn't show up. Oh, wow. And, um, and I actually raised more money than they had raised the year before. Yeah, so sense. then I, I, uh, one of the guys says, hey, I have this gig for you. So he gives me a gig and, and sure enough, make a bunch of money on it. And, then, and, and so then I just sort of fell into it. That's kind of fun because it, it makes sense because you make it fun. People want to spread their money because they're having yeah. fun. They're having fun. But how is it? How hard is it to look out and make sure you caught the people? Like, okay, she over there said twenty-five. He said thirty. Like, how do you keep it? I mean, it's easy. I just take my time. It's like you know, I'm not in a hurry. Okay. The, the, the thing is, you don't want to rush them through it because some of them are making decisions. You know, uh, oh, yes. you know, can, can I can I afford to spend this or, or you know? And, and so sometimes I'll make it light. You know, look. Um, you're up to a thousand dollars. Stop going to Starbucks for a week, and this is paid for. <laughs> I like that. I yeah. do like that. So it's just you just make it fun okay. and light for them. And most people they're there because they're trying to help a cause. Right. Right. You know, you keep playing on the cause. And like that. that makes sense. Okay. Yes. And you're playing on the. Okay. That makes sense. You're mm -hmm. playing on the cause. That's, that sounds fun, actually. Jacob Marquez says hi, James and Christopher. Hi, Jacob. Hello. He's in Texas, so he's watching from Texas. That's what I love about. That's what I love about. What uh, part of Texas? What part are you from again, Jacob? Oh, tell, you tell, tell me in chat what part of Texas you're from. Um, okay, of course, there is Chuck. Mm -hmm. All my friends are like, oh my God, oh my God, it's Big Mike from Chuck. Let's show a couple of pictures I, I, that we have from, from the series. Uh, there you are. I, I just that green tie. Actually, I love that green tie. Actually. Hilarious. <laughs> but it's like, there you are. Oh, yeah, that was a good tie. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a great tie. But I, then, then there's the group with Zachary Levi, of course, the lead. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I always like working with him. I love him as an actor. You know, Zach is one of the most genuine folk in Hollywood. And, oh, wow. and, and, a, and a certifiable star. And, and really, just a great guy. Yeah, so he seems Generous like he Generous to a fault. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so how'd you get that gig? That lasted, that was five years for you. Well, you know, it came during, during a pilot season where I was up for like okay. four other pilots and didn't book any. Wow. You know, had tested on three of the four didn't book any um and and that job uh, was the part was actually not even the the part that i ended up doing on the show and it was possibly recurring so i didn't even read the script i just you know read the sides and went on in when it was time to wow. do it because i was focusing on those series regular parts trying to get a trying to get a series wow and um uh turns out that the showrunner loved me and um i was in every episode of the first season and then they made me series regular the next season so I see again, you just you know, but it's okay. God but, puts but first, you where he wants you. But you where he wants you. But but at first, you do four pilots, and none of them come to fruition. That must just feel just kind of like, well, dang. Well, you know, it's like it's like when you when you go to audition. Every every audition, I'm able to let it go. Okay. My very first audition was for Hill Street Blues. Wow. Um, and I go in. <laughs> And you know, had never auditioned for TV before, and I'm wow. seeing like Huggy Bear in there. Oh yeah, know, oh, wow! All these people that I'd seen on TV growing up yeah. watching, and I was a little starstruck. And <laughs> but then something clicked in me and said, "Well, if they want him, they don't want you. So just relax and do your thing." So I go in, I relaxed, I did my thing, and before I got home, it was on the machine. So then for the next year, I rushed home right after every audition <laughs> and checked my machine. See, that's how long ago it was because I was checking the machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can and you imagine, folks? You ha we, I remember back in the day, you did not have a cell phone or anything. You had right. to, like, right. so be I home. Go home and check, check the machine. That's hilarious. And, um, and then it clicked again. Okay, I'm not going to get them all. So then I was able to just go in and do it and let it go. And so that's the way I, that's the way I treat auditions. I go in, I do it, and I let it go. That's smart because I think also, as we know, it's a small town. Um, 
completely could be you know they could remember for something else later. You never yeah. you never know what's going to happen. I guess and classic example. I, I go in and read for Franklin and Bash. And I love that show. I, I it's it's a fun show. Yeah, and uh, Ernie Hudson comes in. I said, yeah, and I hear the cast directors going, "Oh my God, it's Ernie Hudson." <laughs> You're like, okay. And I'm like, am I not sitting here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is Ernie Hudson, so you're like, okay. And, and then so Ernie comes in, and, and, and they take him in before me. Well, and, then, and then I go in and read, and I'm totally relaxed at this point, because yeah. it's like, if they want Ernie, they're not looking for me. Yeah. So I go in, I do my thing, have a great audition, and then they give me the next one. See, there you go. Yeah. So just just be prepared and do what you do. That's, that's, oh, that's, a, that's, good, that's a good one. But it's funny, yeah, you, I guess that point, like, you just go, okay, it's Ernie Hudson. Of course, he, they're going to want him on the show. But he's, yeah. somebody, he's iconic. I mean, he's, you know. Yeah. And, and you walk in, even I was a little bit, hey, that's Ernie Hudson. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, Ernie. Do, 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 right? do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, no, so that's, that's, that's crazy. Um, but this show, of course, has cult status. Not every show goes to cult status. I mean, there's right. shows that do, like like Buffy and other do. Same thing. Chuck is one of those that what didn't didn't Chuck have issues with like being picked renewed, up? Yeah, picked up. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, several times. Yeah. Well, you know, in NBC, I think never really wanted the show. How funny. Know, because they they were licensing it from Warner Brothers, and um, and we ended up outlasting three NBC presidents. Okay. Hello, people who love the show. They love that show. And I just think it's, it's so now you're part of that universe of folk. They're part of a cult show. You've gone to the Comic Cons, haven't you? Yeah. Like I said, yeah, how, how was the experience of going oh, to you? Comic Con is great. I, you, see, I, I had gone to Comic Con before just as a spectator, okay. just to watch people because it's in my town. You know, I live in San Diego. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'd go just to, just to watch people in, in the various levels of costumery. <laughs> And the thing I love about Comic Con is you you get in where you fit in, yeah. costume wise. Yes. Like one day, I walk in and I see this guy in like you know the uh, top of the line stormtrooper outfit from Star wow. Wars. Like this guy went out and spent five, six, seven thousand dollars on this thing. Oh. The voice pack, the whole nine. Oh wow! And then I see a kid in a cardboard box that he had painted. With a, a football helmet that, that he had that, that he had taken the cage off and made a little a little mask and and I was like this is what Comic Con is all about. Um, that guy got in where he fit in, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I got exactly what he was trying to do: stormtrooper in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, but are are they ever really emotional? Sometimes I always wonder. There must be people who really are fans of these shows change their lives. I mean, did you have any emotional encounters or people people stand in line overnight? Yeah, I know it's amazing to to see a panel. Like when we were doing Chuck panels, people would be in line overnight. Yeah, and I you know I, I don't know if it's not Jesus, I ain't standing in line overnight. <laughs> I, I did, you know, and usually I'm down there uh, with with my little film crew. I, I'm just I like saying. That. I like that. You're sleeping on the sidewalk? What? No. So, so yes. I have my little film crew. So, so we'll be down there shooting stuff for different different outlets, the uh, geek geek roundtable, and you know, a couple of news outlets, and just just doing some some man on the street kind of interviews. And so I, I decided to feed the crew one day at, at, at Subway because it was right. close. It was like right there. And mm -hmm. so we walk in and people start screaming. So I'm looking around going, why, like, why are you screaming? screaming? Like, well, well, and, and my friend David, who produces the show, yeah. he goes, um, that, that's, that's you. <laughs> that was you weird. It, it, Big Mike, they, that's. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was kind of weird. Yeah, and, it must you know, be. People are shaking as I wow. sign their thing. It's like, wow, that's really odd. Just the guy. Let's take a picture. I've I've had that experience. Um, there's a group of people called the Hardies, and they they watch one called Hard on a Homer Channel, and I do a show uh -huh. for them. And they did a, a they did a party for me in Ohio. I was in Ohio visiting family, and it was it was the first time where I had people crying when they met me. Yeah, handing their babies. So it's like here's my wow. baby. And I was like wow. okay, I was handing babies. I'm kissing babies, and and it, it was a strange a strange feeling. It's wonderful because it's like I'm affecting change in someone's life on some level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. You're affecting change. Somebody for an hour they watch you on TV and think, wow, this is this is great. Well, can you imagine like like being at status like Michael Jackson? You know, he comes out. He, he would come out to to a concert and people would faint. Faint. Because they love him so much, so and I'm much. thinking, so nobody has really ever loved me. <laughs> Not even my family. My, my mama don't love. My mama has never fainted when she saw me. So I think I'm not. I'm not loved. 
My mother would not wait in line overnight to see me either. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But but when you come over, you can empty that trash. Oh, okay. Is, is that, is, okay. I was just telling I was just telling Rissa, who's our producer, my mother's gonna my nurse recently. It's, it feels like it feels like all the time I go over there it's always can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? I'm like, um, I'm going to say hi to you and I'm I'm already at work already. Yeah. It's like every time I go over there, some mothers do, don't they? Well here's the funny thing about my mom is like when I was a kid, whenever my brother my brother was six years older, so whenever he learned to do something, we all kinda learned it. Oh, okay. So when he was doing laundry, I was doing laundry. You know, I'm, I'm six years old wearing the pink underwear because I, I, <laughs> I didn't know that the red shouldn't be in there with the white. <laughs> Cooking my own breakfast at six, yes. which really worked out for me when I got to college. So I can cook, thank the okay, Lord. I don't I can cook. cook you, thank you. Yes. Right. And then, um, but now it's like I go over, like like sometimes I'll come up and, and I'm working on something. You know, like I just did Black Jesus, so I stayed, I stayed with my mom for like a that. few nights. And every night she cooked. She was like, what do you feel like tonight? I was like, I was like, you don't have to cook. I said, I'm probably gonna eat something on set, but I get back and she cooked this meal. Mm -hmm. So I gotta eat. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're a little healthy. If you can't see us, we're both a little healthy. So yes, Big we like our food. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't turn down food either. It was given to me. I do not turn it down. But it's funny you say I'm, I'm gonna do, we're adults like we're adults and we're yeah. okay. It's like you can relax, but you know, that's what moms do. Gerald says when I was first in LA and a bit lost. Mark at the request of our mutual friend took a call from me. Looking back, I'm sure I asked the most naive of questions, but Mark said, quote, get a part-time job, get into acting class, and you'll be you'll be a fine waiter for some lucky diners out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Seriously, he was gracious and gave me some advice and checked in with me months later, always offering great advice. That's what Gerald Webb said. Very nice. Didn't hurt me to help somebody else. No, okay, that, okay, tell me, okay, black folks can help each other. I do, I talk about this on the show all the time. There, there's room for all of us. There's plenty there. of room for everybody. I mean, I seem that way sometimes. Yeah. We're crabs in a barrel trying to get to that yeah. one slot up there. Screw the one slot. Let's make slots for everybody. Look at, look at the big picture. You know, that's what we have to do. We have to start looking at the big picture. You know, you, you, you look at other folks in the industry and they help each other. So yes. We, we need to help each other. And that's very true. When he says other folks, he means other races. So, so they help if each somebody's other. out there listening, help me. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> he wants help. He wants help. <laughs> help him. Make him work for and, 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 and I tell you what, Gerald is that, is that guy. Oh, Gerald, no, he is. Gerald helps me all the time. Well, say, well, say me and Gerald back and forth. We've done these main things back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Jacob says he's from Amarillo. Oh, Amarillo. Okay. I don't know where. I've never been to Amarillo. I've been to San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston. I've never been to Amarillo. Houston has like this this little meat market that that makes all different types of Ooh, sausages, good. And, and there's this like smoked goat sausage oh, that's amazing. That sounds good. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, they give me hungry. I just, I just had food before I got here, and I get hungry again. Um, but yeah, so anyway, but no, I I'm glad that, that that came up. We can help each other. There's enough room for everyone. Absolutely, everyone has their certain talent, uniqueness. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're all the same black guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We can all have room. Well, Rusty Cundiff is the same way. Mm -hmm. Rusty, whenever I'm working, or whenever he's working, helps me. He's like, you know, if, if, if I have something for you, I'll get you in there. Right. You know, that's how I ended up doing Black Jesus, because Rusty was working on it. See? I, lo I love hearing stories like that. I do. Um, I want to talk about something that's actually a little serious. Um, I think it's very cool. Because like I said, I was doing more research on you, and I was really just, I was just so impressed with you. So the next couple of clips are actually really, are really kind of, you know, they're funny and serious, but... When you were on Glee, play the clip. You wanted to see me? Finn Hudson. This is Rob and Betty Adams. I took the liberty of calling them to congratulate them on their son landing the big role of Rizzo in Greece. And lo and behold, it was the first they'd heard of it. Look, ever since Wade was a little boy, we That's knew that he was different. Gone. Most That's little boys don't Wade's want to dress as Shirley gone. Hemphill for Halloween. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just so specific. When Wade performed as a girl at Nationals, we were really proud. But Chicago is a very liberal city. I mean, we live in Ohio, and to be perfectly honest, we're worried about Wade's safety. I think you're overreacting. Are we? Well, I've personally I seen her. you physically assaulted in the hallway. This concerns me. Wait, is that true? Ooh, put some pants on, Monique. <laughs> <laughs> we're pulling Wade out of the play. And we're asking Wade not to dress like a girl during school hours. Once he gets home, he can be whoever he wants to be. Wade Adams, you can return to your sewing exam in Homac. 
He's so good. Oh, I mean, the, the dialogue is so good, I can't too. Yeah. You would do something like this. You mean do something like conveniently protect the welfare of a student so that it just happens to derail the school musical? I think that sounds exactly like something I'd do. Classic Sue Sylvester. Yeah, she's I just, great. And she, oh, she's just, oh my God, she's so good. Um, I was just saying, rest in peace, Corey. I just, I just, he's not here anymore. I mean, Corey yeah. Monteith is not in the world anymore. Um, first of all, I watched Glee. I remember, that, I remember that scene. I remember watching Glee. That young actor was so good in that role. Oh, fantastic. So, I mean, how was that playing the parents of that of that character? Such a groundbreaking kind of character. Well, well you know, it's, I, th I think at the time, there was a, there was a lot of, um, of, of that situation sort of in the spotlight. Because I remember uh, right before I booked that, uh, there was a guy and his wife on the Today Show, and they were talking about letting their son go to school wearing uh, um, like a little mermaid outfit or something like that. And, and so they were um, they were like, well, you know, we just figured we didn't want to damage him by not letting him wear what he wants to wear. So uh, it shouldn't be specific. It shouldn't be. Uh, so I was like, well, you know, I think as a parent, you have to sort of shape do some shaping, mm -hmm. especially early. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and you don't just let kids do whatever they want right, to do. Right, of course not, you don't, no. You know, and so I think they probably missed the boat on that, but, but you know, you do what you do, I guess. Right, well, my, one of my points for about you is that, again, it was another role that we don't talk about in the black community at all, and you no. played this role that, this is probably happening more, I mean, it's happening, probably happening all the time. Yeah. But we just don't talk about it, the whole just kind of, the cross-dressing or whatever, whatever that, whatever that kid or the transgender whatever was going through, was going through, and right. so it's interesting. You played a care, you played a parents, you and the actress played parents that were of that kind of child. Right, because uh, in the black community, it's just, uh, oh yeah, well that's Tyrone's cousin, Pookie. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Pookiness. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, right, and that's the end. Of it. That's it. That's it. You don't just yeah. don't talk about it. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. So it was an interesting. I, I think I, I think it, in, in looking at that, it was very interesting, and yeah. and that um, you know perhaps it sparked some dialogue. Yeah, hopefully it did. Yeah. yeah. The next thing I want to show is show this one too. This is another one I want to show you. Mark Christopher Lawrence. Um, I love making people laugh, but we're here to talk about bullying, and bullying is no laughing matter. When I was a kid, you know, bullying mostly consisted of, uh, you know, verbal bullying, which is uh, name calling, teasing, and physical bullying, which is, you know, you grab a kid by the head and give him a noogie or something, you know, pushing and shoving, that, that sort of thing, physical bullying. Well, today bullying has has taken on a whole new life with with the internet and the cyber bullying. You know, emails, text messages, uh, social media, that sort of thing. It, it's a whole different realm of bullying because when I was a kid, you could escape it when you went home. And now kids go home, they open up their computer, they log into their emails and whatnot, and their Facebook pages and Twitter accounts, and it's there. You can't escape it. It's relentless. If you are being bullied, you are not alone. Uh, there are lots of people willing to help you, but you have to take that step in asking for help. Um, don't continue to be a victim. You know, go to your parents, your teachers, your principals. All of these people can be a force behind you to make it stop. If you are a bully, you need to stop now. It's not cool. Nobody is impressed. You need to stop before someone gets hurt or worse. Bullying will only lead to a dead end. Bullying destroys lives. Let's all work together to end bullying now. Yes. It, it's funny, me and my little crew shot that thing, um, and, and uh, they're using it for um, Say No Bullying, Yes. you know, through the Human Growth Foundation. Growth, growth, say, yeah, growth, and um, uh, when we shot it, at the end of it, what we did was, you know, we, we t intentionally shot it so that it looked like we were in a park. And then at the end, we sort of zoom in, and you can see it's a graveyard. Oh, why, why didn't they do more? I don't know why they didn't use that. But that that's actually very powerful. Yeah, I, I, I have an idea for another for another okay. bullying thing. I, I just need to find some funding to, to, to get it done. Again, it's something we don't talk about in the black community either. Not bullying. We don't talk about bullying. You talk about we have you know black on black violence like that. We don't talk about regular just bullying. Yeah, I you know there was neighborhood bullying when I was growing up. It's like everybody was scared. We had we had one too when I was there. But I wasn't bullied, but we had one that was we knew who he was. And yeah. Who they were, um, for you. So you were bullied, yeah. Little by little, by little, little by yeah. Little, but so. but I fought back, you know. Yeah. I probably lost five hundred fights, but hey, were you still? Bullied? But still, but I guess. But I would think it still does. It's no less. Even though you fought back, you still had to fight back. You I still had, had to, to fight back. Right, exactly. I think one time I ran home, my brother made me go back <laughs> and fight. He's like, if you don't go back, then you mean you're gonna fight. 
Yes. <laughs> so I was like, well, all right, I'm going to take him over you. <laughs> right. I mean, but it's, it's something, and you, and you mentioned something that's so important, because I, now I, I, have, I, have, I have grandkids, actually, who are now just starting to get onto the phones and the eye touches and stuff, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they're getting Instagram accounts and things, mm-hmm. and this is so important. You said this, the cyberbullying. Oh, it yeah. really is real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, kids are kids are killing themselves they are. because of what's on the internet. So, so look, if you have kids, you got to keep an eye on that stuff. You you got to look and see what they're doing, who they're communicating with, and what kind of stuff is going back and forth. You know, what I mean, I, I, you you have to. Yeah, you have to. Uh, I always say that uh, it's it's already tough growing up. Period. Yeah, <laughs> just already, and each person has their own thing that is. That's, I mean, you know, you have, you know, you're a late bloomer, or you're too tall, or too fat, or you're too fat, or yeah. Too, so it's always or too black, or too this, or too light skin. So I remember when I grew up, it was like I had sisters who were like they were like they get beat up because they were light skin. Yeah, because yeah, they had good hair. You know, we, right. we get you know, that, that whole thing back then. It was always kills back me, then. Like, like <laughs> I'm saying, because they were ask Gerald about being light skin. <laughs> that's right. He, that's right. He is a light, lighter skin man. Me, me and Gerald, me and Gerald can't, can't, can't get a job <laughs> in Black Hollywood. <laughs> I was told once I wasn't black enough. I was told that once. I'm like, well, I'm pretty brown. I guess I'm not that brown. I might eat just Elba or anything, or right. like that, right? Or more chestnut. But apparently, I mean, they want when they say black, they want somebody that they feel they feel is black. Is black. I, I I actually recently read for a job. And and there was there was a black woman in the room. Wow. And so as they cast this family, it's like I noticed that they were like getting everybody the same shade. I was like, people in my same family shade. are all different shades. <laughs> yes. My father is dark as this table. Yes, right. Yes, right. <laughs> you know, I'm red. My sister's yes. yellow. Yeah, oh yeah, oh no. My 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 non black friends do laugh when they see my family and they go, Oh, there's some blonde in this one and yeah. my brother's really dark. It's like, yeah, shades of black we're all we literally are all shades of exactly of brown in our exactly. families. It does happen. So yeah, don't do the whole they're all light skin. I mean the college show is kinda of funny because they did kind of have the light skin ones and the darker ones. Mm-hmm. They, did, they did a little bit of both. <laughs> so yeah. they going on. So it's but I, I was I was told once I wasn't black enough. Wow. Like look at my nose and everything, it's all I don't know if it's all there, but yeah, yeah, I knew what they meant. Yeah, they yeah. wanted somebody that they feel right represents whatever that whatever that represents. And good for dark skin people. I have no problem with that. I'm glad I get jobs. But it's just kind of weird for everybody that yeah. black is just not just one color. Exactly. We're all, exactly. We're all, we're all over the place. But that's very cool. You're doing the you're doing the bullying thing because I think it's I think especially the, now the cyber stuff, the Twitter. Ugh. Mm-hmm. I, I Don't got, get me started on the Twitter. I got attacked by by a famous a famous daytime actress, and I had to shut I had to shut her down. Yeah, I I know I don't I don't do Twitter wars. I don't do that stuff. But I've got I mean this fan too. I mean obviously I'm in the public eye. I have gotten you know he's fat. His teeth are fucking. I mean, all, all kind of stuff. That part doesn't bother me so much because it usually it's a one off comment here and yeah. there. Fine. But I had a few people come really come at me mm. like, and like and like relentlessly just keep it going. I'm like. You guys have live things to do. Like it's kind of crazy, yeah. and I just I ended up blocking them or muting them or whatever. And it's just kind of. But this I had one. I had to. I had to actually shut her down and then block her. Wow. And I heard she. I heard she kept going. And I didn't even do anything wrong. I don't know what I did. Wow. And that to me. But for people who don't have the strength like that, it can be really tough on them. It, it's really hard for me not to respond to stuff that I that I read. Like like when forty five is tweeting. Yes. It's so hard. For oh, me. I know. I know. So, t- I know. And, and so today I actually said something. Today I said <laughs> I said I said why don't you just stop tweeting and do your job? Because <laughs> 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 yeah, because a lot of your tweets are good. And I mean they're they're faith based ones. You're promoting something. Your yours are really nice. You're like me. We're just like <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to stay in our corner, our lane. Say stay in our lane mm-hmm. and just do our jobs and get booked work and be longevity in the business. That's all we, that's all we want to do. We don't want to you know exactly. And Jacob just said you are you are great on on Chuck. Thank you. Okay, Chuck. Um, Circus Kane. I want to show the trailers. It's kind of, you'll see him. He's all in the trailer. It's, and it's it looks gory. It looks like it's in the kind of the vein of Saw mixed with like. Well, this is just a short clip. We all got that creepy golden ticket invitation. You have been invited to survive one night, and you walk away with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This guy is like king of the traveling horror show. Balthazar King. He just wants to get everybody hyped about his return. <laughs> And survive circus cave. Is that a real chainsaw? Yeah. Oh my god, this is not good. We're getting 
out of here. What's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great part. Okay, Jonathan Nikki. Am I like talking the kid? I mean, the kid oh, yeah. actor is great. He's grown up. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And does like MMA and <laughs> so, so, he's, a, he's a beast. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so okay, you now you know. Okay, again, we're on a black network, and I have to I have to ask because I'm black. Do you get killed off first? I do not. Yes, thank you. Okay, good. I do, I do not. <laughs> Yay! Okay, thank God. Thank God. Okay, this one shot, I'm like, oh, come on, thank God. It's, I don't know what that's all about, but we know what it's all about, but yes. I have to ask. Um, okay, so if, how did this, how did this, how did Circus Kane, again, non unconventional, how did this come into your orbit? Gerald Webb. Gerald Webb, see that name? And he keeps popping up. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I did a project that, that um, Gerald and his partner had something to do with in Buffalo. And, and, I, and I mentioned to Gerald's, uh, business partner, I said, I said, yeah, I said, I said, I want to play like this. I want to play a dark role, you know, just just because people see me as funny, mm -hmm. and I, I think I'm a better dramatic actor than I am as a funny actor because I work harder at it. Yeah. And so um, when this came up, you know, he calls me up and says, "Hey, Chris wants to talk to you about something." So we talk, and and this is what he wants to talk about. His partner Chris, who I know also. Yeah. Right and on. so um, and and basically he said he said, well, you know, the lead is already gone. He says, but there's this other part that I think you'd be great in, and. You know, I'm still funny, but <laughs> yeah, I read some. I read a review or something. Some the, the reviews were good. The reviews, reviews are great, actually. Oh yeah, um, Gerald. So uh, written, directed by written, written and by Zach Ward. He's one of the actors in the film. Is he in it? Is Zach in it? Is it? I don't know. Producer by the way. So it's these deep installationalized films. Um, apparently, you have some really good lines in it. Apparently, somebody, somebody was quoting something. I I don't give it away when people need to see the film, but they were like completely talking about how. You had a really good line that was so funny. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm like, I'm funny. He's funny. He's funny. You know, funny comes easy. I, I think. I, I think that's. I, I think that's why I think I'm a. I'm a better dramatic actor because funny comes easy, and I don't. I don't really have to work at it. Yeah. Um. Uh. The drama. It's you know. I got to dig around in ugly stuff. You know. Yeah. To get to where I need to be. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And um. Um. And, and I think sometimes it's it's unpleasant and and it makes you it makes you work harder. Yeah, you know, and, and as a result of it, you know, because of my commitment to the work, it's it's like it, it it makes me a better actor. When you look back now, or I mean, you haven't looked back yet, but if you start looking back now, did you? I mean, when you first started, did what were your aspirations at the beginning? Was it just to get work, period, or did you have like I want to be a dramatic actor one day, or I just want to be a comedian? Did you have Did you have a thought in the beginning? I, I I used to say, I want to act, direct. And produce okay. and ultimately be acting and directing in something that I've produced while I'm doing a commercial on the same network. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, just that. Okay. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean that's what I used to say when I was when I was young. Um, and now it's like, you know, that's sort of morphed into um, I, I, I want to produce and direct and, 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 and be able to control what I'm doing. Mm, yes. You know, I think I think ultimately yeah. that that's that's where where I'm that's where I'm striving for now. And because now now you've been in the business for a while, I guess you have that knowledge. And you know what to do, what not to do, what kind of works for some people, what doesn't work. For, you, mm -hmm. you probably know that all now. Yeah, because you all the experience. Yeah, I think part of it is is, is is understanding you know your instrument and what your mm -hmm. what your uh, uh, your own personal talents are, and and then sort of start putting people around you that that sort of fill up your weak spots. Mm, that's good. Yeah. So it's, it's basically getting out of your own way again. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Because the big picture is the project. That's the big mm -hmm. picture. The big picture mm -hmm. is creating something that's good, people are going to want to want to see. Exactly. That's the big picture. That's how, and then it's like, how can we get there? Who right. can I bring to get me there? Right. Right? The right actors, the right crew, right. the right, I mean, everything, I'm sure. That's, the, that's one thing I love about Gerald and those guys is that, is that, is that they get that. 
and and they get the right folks in the room and and then all of a sudden you get a circus k which is you know this great i know it's like funny I can't see horrific it. film oh, yeah. and i totally want to see it i love it i love those kind of films i was like i saw trying like oh I, want to, I really want to see that that's my it's my right up my alley my kind of my kind of yeah. film um but i would say like i said for you i mean i you could you could do everything it's so funny to me. Like you just you do you can do drama, comedy, horror. Well, that's that's what actors do. I you know I, not all actors. I started but in the theater, you see. know, and so as as an actor in the theater, it's like you just want to work. You you know you just want to get better at it. You want to you want to make every role different from the last or whatever, you know. Um, and so, so I consider myself a character actor. See, those are the ones usually last the longest, right? But yeah. The, as character actors, everybody's trying to be a star. I just gotta get somebody to recognize my name because I think I think that I think that directly affects what you get paid, you know. So like people know my face, but they don't know my name, and, and, and the difference yeah. between being a recognizable face and and a name, you know, financially you feel it. Well, you know what's funny? There's that 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 uh, documentary I saw years ago, that guy in that thing. Yeah. And then one, they did one called The Gal on that thing, too. So it's like they followed eight or nine people. Mm -hmm. who I'm like, oh, my God, you remember him? I don't remember that. And like, yeah. It was so funny, but you're right. It's like, but they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah I've been doing it for 30-some years, and I, and I still get, tell me what I've seen you in. <laughs> uh, did you go to uni? <laughs> hey, that's dude. <laughs> yes. <sir>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got all those. I've been in business 10 years, and, I, and I'm, I'm starting to get a few of those, too. Like, did we meet at, I'm like, Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Be that such and such, or mm -hmm. what you that one thing. I'm like, mm, I was, but I still, we don't talk about that anymore. You know, the, yeah, my, back in my old past, I don't talk about that anymore. Yeah, right. That kind of thing. So it's kind of it's kind of fun. So you just, you literally get out of your way, just do the work, and just keep moving forward. I guess it's a, it's a, it's a big picture. Yeah, and, and, and my thing is this: it's like I try to be a pro. I try to I try, I try to make sure that when I'm when I'm on set, you know, I'm professional and and show up on time and early. That's oh, right. Very on good. Time is not enough. Okay. You know, if if, if you have a nine o'clock call, you know, and they want to get you into the works, or or, or if it's voiceover, you know, you're doing some looping. You know, nine o'clock call is we want to start at nine. We don't, yeah, you know. So uh, I'm early. You know, so yeah. so I think uh, and prepared. I better say prepared. Don't just come in here haphazard and like yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I didn't I didn't really pick these lodges, so I, mean, I don't know. I'm like, to no one's don't. It's money is everything's dry, money's a driving force. Time is money. Yeah. You gotta come in at least. I mean, you make a mistake here, and that's one thing. But at least show them you did some like you did preparation, some work. right? Right, <laughs> right. I was like, hello, because I mean, Gerald hired me for a movie uh, back in May, and I was like, I hadn't acted in a long time, uh, and I only had three pages, and I was just like, oh my god, three pages was so long. Um, <laughs> but I did, I did literally. I mean, I did read them over. I mean, I didn't come in just like, oh no, god, I knew, I knew my lines on some level, but yeah. like. But at least, like the least you could do, because they have to shoot these things and go to the next thing and shoot the right. next thing. Don't waste their time. Yeah, especially, especially like nowadays when, when when there's a lot of low budget stuff out there, you know they don't have time to fool around. Yeah. It's like it's like you know sometimes you're shooting like nine pages a day. Right. Oh my god, you guys! I think there's another phone in the in the room somewhere, and it's and it's ringing. <laughs> it's a nice ring, isn't it? It's called. It's, it's very it's, ethereal. It's very uh, virgin. <laughs> <laughs> airlines, you know. You know <laughs> oh my God, it is. When they do, when they do their opening yeah. stuff, it is. Oh, that is very Virgin Airlines. Oh, they're going out of business too. Are they? they are. Alaska bought them. I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, oh, tell me why, because I love it. That was my favorite because, domestic airline. Because because their their points don't don't go over yeah, from yeah. Virgin Atlantic to. No, they don't. I was so mad when they're I found that. They're totally separate. Yeah. Oh, there's something booty about that, <laughs> and not the good kind. <laughs> 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 I love live TV. I love it. But no, I version. I think Alaska bought them, and I think they're. I don't think switching the planes or like. It to me it was the best domestic airline. Yeah, JetBlue and, and they're, they're both are really good. I loved taking them up to the bay. Oh my god, me too. Oh my god, because you can get the airport and, and upgrade to first class fifty bucks. I, I don't remember, remember. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I know. And the first class was nice. They had nice big seats mm -hmm. for some of us who need big seats. <laughs> Didn't have to ask for that, that extension. <laughs> Wait a minute! I can't get this thing off. You got an extension? <laughs> so, so here's what I ask you because I, of course, am a public eye, and I've gotten comments from people like, "Oh, you're, you're a fat ass." Like, how do you handle any of? How do you handle being a big guy in Hollywood? I, I, I tend to work more when I'm bigger. See, there you go. You know, I work more in film and TV uh, when I'm bigger. 
less than commercials, I think. Oh, interesting. But but since Chuck, it's been hard for me to get commercials anyway because people people oh. uh, it, it, the, the excuse is well he's too recognizable. Okay, make him a, make him a spokesperson then. Well, he's not a big enough name. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. Oh, it's like so. Everybody watching, go ahead and, 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 and follow me on on Twitter and all that stuff, so I can become a name. <laughs> make him make him a name and not yeah. a recognizable face. That's what the problem is. <laughs> he has a nice name, just a nice strong name. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, Circus K, where where is it available? Is it available? Where is it available? Um, Red Box. Red Box. And I think there's some downloads somewhere. Gerald can tell you more about that. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll make sure Gerald puts it so we can put it up there. I'll, I'll put it on our, on our Facebook page, so if you want to see it, and you can go there. But there's red boxes everywhere. I see them all the time. Yeah. everywhere. And probably just Google it. You, yeah. Yeah, you Google everything. And well, make sure you guys get to know where that is, because it does look good. Um, I ask my guests the same two questions, and I never prep them uh -oh. beforehand. So I make <clears> you do a little work while you're here. I've asked 90... Seven other people described these questions. <laughs> this is on episode 98. Uh, I believe in language, and uh, I think uh, language can affect us in so many different ways, obviously. Mm -hmm. What is a word, and I've updated it now to word or phrase, we should not say anymore? A word or phrase that we should not say anymore? Uh, retarded. Hmm. It's the first time I ever said that on here. Okay. Like that. Yeah. On the converse of that, what word or phrase should we say more of? Dumbass. <laughs> you have to explain on that one. I don't remember that either. But um, <laughs> there are a lot of dumb asses out there, yes. Yeah. And dumb assery. Uh, that goes plenty on. of dumb assery. Yes, it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> um, why, why, do say, why, do you, why do you say that? Because because sometimes a dumb ass needs to realize that they were dumb ass. <laughs> I was, watching, I was watching this thing on YouTube the other day. Okay. And these kids are like, uh, they, 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 they were on a skateboard. They lit a ramp on fire. Oh, my God. With gas. <sighs> and then they poured gas on the guy's pant legs, who was getting ready to skate. And then they set him on fire, so he, he goes down. And then he realizes that he's burning. Oh, my, oh my God. And he starts running around, and the other guy's trying to tackle him and, and help him roll. But he's running. And it, 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 it's hilarious. Yes. I can't explain. He's like, yes. But clearly, dumbassery. <laughs> dumbassery happening. <laughs> <laughs> I think these fellas here are steeped in dumbassery. In dumbassery. And now I'm going to They must be home. from Damascus. <laughs> That's a bit. They're going to Damascus. Exactly. Damascus. Alexander Dumas. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you know I'm going to go home and try to find that video, of course. Yeah. Just so I can see what it looks it's like. It's pretty funny. It looks... I mean, this sounds so... I, I was never that kind of person, so I don't even know what that is. George Lopez had, had posted on Insta. That's okay. how, that's okay. how I, I first, first saw it. It was <sighs> cracked me up. Oh, jeez, people. I was like, yeah, that's a couple of dumb answers right there. That's like, so <laughs> I like this. So you've actually gave two really good answers that I have not had on the 98 episodes of this show. You've gave me some, some really good answers. See, I should, be a, I should be a name. Yeah, should be a name. Mark Christopher Lawrence, you guys. Mark Christopher Lawrence. Say it 20 times. And I'll make it happen. And tell beer. somebody. And tell somebody. Yeah, yeah. They just say that. I just tell somebody at the same time. Tell them to follow me. How about that? <laughs> well, I'm going to. Mark, it's been great having you on the show. It's been fun being here. I appreciate you inviting me. You are just you. Are, you are great. You're great. I, 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 I wish everything for you. Everything you want, I want. I wish it for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You can follow me at Mark C H R Lawrence on Twitter. Are you on Instagram and stuff? I am Mark Christopher Lawrence. I'm on Instagram. And you have a Facebook fan page at all or no? Uh, yep. Marcus for Lawrence on that too. Yep. Or Mark Lawrence, Marcus Lawrence. Yep. Okay, so I guess so. There must be there must be a Mark Lawrence out there. That's why, that's why you're Marcus. When Christopher. I first started, uh, there was there was Mark the old character actor Mark Lawrence, but I think yeah. he I think he spelled it with a C. I see. And then there was another uh, actor in Screen Actors Guild that was Mark A. Lawrence, and so I just went with my whole name. And no one calls you Martin Lawrence. You ever got that at all? No, but people think that he's my cousin or something. <laughs> is, that, is Martin Lawrence your brother? Or if that gives me jobs, sure. He'd give me my relative, right? Yeah, I, you know. Yeah, sure, why not? We're all related. He's funny. It's, <laughs> he's a little funny. He's a little funny. Yeah, he's he's, yeah. A, he's a little okay for himself. <laughs> Just a little okay for himself. I'm James Lott Jr. You can't forget my name. My father's James Lott Sr. And he's somewhere here in L.A. Um, but you can follow us on iTunes, um, and you can follow us on SoundCloud, YouTube, under Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. Um, next week's my 99th episode, and I have the meme queens coming on, uh, Jessica Williams, uh, Jessica, I mean Jessica Williams, Jessica uh, Caesar and Julie Messer are coming on, and then my 100th episode, 100 episodes, December 11th, 
have some special guests. There'll be drinking involved, and who knows what's going to, who's going to come through. So you yeah, have those two look forward to. Have a great rest of your week, and see you next time. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.